Back in June, I tested 25 of the best-selling LED light bulbs on Amazon, and one bulb, the Philips 60-watt Ultra Definition, came out on top in basically every single measurement. But a lot of people were disappointed that I didn't test their favorite bulbs from Ikea, Costco, Home Depot, and Walmart. And other people said that they wanted cooler color temperatures or higher brightness. So in an attempt to please absolutely everyone, I ventured out of the house and into real stores, and I even signed up for a Costco membership just to buy $25 in light bulbs. From Philips on Amazon, I got the ultra definition bulbs in 60, 75, and 100 watt soft white, and 60 watt in 5,000. Kelvin daylight. At Walmart, I picked up the Philips high efficiency bulbs in 60 and 100 watt 5000 Kelvin and 60 watt soft white. Also at Walmart, I got a 200 watt Fiat Electric adjustable color temperature bulb that can change between 2700, 4000, and 5000 Kelvin using a switch on the base of the bulb. And then also from Fiat Electric at Costco, I bought both the 60 watt and 100 watt adjustable color temperature bulbs that also have a switch on their base, this time to select between five preset color temperatures ranging from 2700 Kelvin all the way up to 6500 Kelvin. At Ikea, I got the Solheta 60 and 100 watt soft white bulbs, and as a bonus, I also picked up a trad-free 75 watt Zigbee CCT bulb by popular demand, even though as a smart bulb it doesn't really fit in with this video. Also by popular demand, back on Amazon, I bought the GE Reveal LED bulbs in 2700 Kelvin, and also these illegal GE Reveal incandescent halogen bulbs that definitely shouldn't be for sale based on the United States Department of Energy's efficiency policy for general purpose light bulbs. And due to a significant number of requests, I also bought a package of 60 watt soft white bulbs from the LED manufacturing giant Cree. Then at Home Depot, I bought a legal 200 watt incandescent bulb from Fiat Electric that can technically still be sold based on its claimed lumen output since it's too bright to qualify as a general service lamp. And last to show what LED bulbs are capable of, I bought what most people in the know have said are the highest quality LED bulbs that exist, the UG LED Sunwave series that cost me a whopping $92 for a two pack of 75 watt equivalent 3000 Kelvin color temperature bulbs. Starting out with the brightness testing. For the 60 watt equivalent bulbs, the Costco Fiat Electric electric bulbs were the brightest with around 870 lumens, but they did draw significantly more power than the rest of the bulbs at around 9.2 watts average. While the most efficient bulbs were predictably the Philips high efficiency models that topped the charts at 181 lumens per watt for the soft white and 174 lumens per watt for the daylight version, which means that they would have a yearly operating cost of less than a dollar based on three hours a day and 20 cents per kilowatt hour. For the 75 watt equivalent bulbs, the Philips ultra definition was the brightest at 1,220 lumens and also the most efficient at 144 lumens per watt for a yearly operating cost of $1.86. And for the 100 watt bulbs, the feed electric bulbs from Costco topped the brightness list again at 1,759 lumens, but the Philips Ultra Definition was close behind at 1,751 lumens. And for efficiency, both the Philips bulbs came out on top with the high efficiency model at 198 lumens per watt and the Ultra Definition bulb at 153 lumens per watt, which would make for a yearly operating cost of $1.77 and $2.50 respectively. I also measured the color temperature of each bulb and most of them matched their stated temperatures within a 3% margin of error, while the GE Reveal LED bulb and the IKEA Solheta bulbs were a bit too warm and the Costco Fiat 100 watt bulb was a bit too cool for its 2700 and 5000 Kelvin settings. And during this testing, I also thought the concept of selectable color temperature was pretty interesting, especially if you don't already know your preference or if you're trying to match some other lighting in the room. Separate from color temperature though, a major difference between cheap bulbs and high quality bulbs is their ability to accurately show the natural colors of an object, which is called their color rendering index or CRI. And for the most part, all the bulbs in this video did a great job compared to the cheap no-name bulbs from my last video. But some notably great performers were the UG LED bulb that had a 97.6 CRI and the Philips Ultra Definition series, which ended up at the top of the list with the 75 watt version doing the best at 97.1 CRI, then the 100 watt version, and then the 60 watt daylight and soft white versions. The 200 watt incandescent bulb with its clear glass casing acts as sort of a control test here since it's basically the definition of what perfect CRI should be and that's what the meter reflected with a perfect score of 100 in each color subscore. CRI specifically uses colors from R1 to R8 but extended CRI includes more vibrant colors and one in particular R9 is typically hard for LEDs to render but it's important for accurately lighting human skin tones. And you can see that the bulb from UG LED had an excellent R9 subscore of 90 
99. While the ultra definition and high efficiency balls from Philips also had very respectable R9 subscores between 80 and 91. A surprisingly terrible performance in both general CRI and R9 subscore came from the GE Reveal incandescent bulb, whose tinted glass and halogen gas blocked out a large chunk of its emission spectrum, leading to a low CRI of 85.3 and an R9 score of 39, which is absolutely terrible for an incandescent bulb. Another thing that some people mentioned in the comments in my last video was that some bulbs look like they had a green tint, which is generally not what you want when lighting a space. And thankfully we can measure that too. Let's take the Philips 60 watt soft white high efficiency bulb for example. If we plot its color coordinates on this DUV color chart, we can see that it's slightly above this curved line. And that curved line represents a completely neutral white from a pure black body source, which shouldn't have any green or pink tints. If the point falls above that line, we would expect a slightly greenish tint. And if it falls below the line, we would expect a slightly pinkish tint. And we call that value the Delta UV or DUV. And you can see that the Philips high efficiency bulb had a positive DUV, which again is above the line, meaning it would appear slightly greenish and negative values for DUV will be pinkish. Here are the exact color temperatures and DUV values of all the bulbs first arranged by color temperature. And here they are arranged by DUV with the greenest tints first, neutral whites in the middle, and the pinkest tints last. And you can see that the Philips Ultra Definition 60 watt soft white was extremely close to perfectly neutral with a slight pink tint, while the Fiat Electric 200 watt, Fiat Electric 100 watt, UG LED and Philips Ultra Definition 75 watt were also extremely close to neutral with very slightly positive or greenish DUV values. Another area where these bulbs significantly outperformed the cheaper bulbs from my last video was in flicker percentage. No matter where you live, your lights probably run off of AC current, which in the US is 120 volts, 60 hertz, meaning it oscillates between positive 170 and negative 170 volts, and it passes through zero volts 120 times per second. And every time it does that, your lights technically turn off for a fraction of a second. For an incandescent bulb, this is barely noticeable since it's superheated tungsten filament stays white hot during zero volt periods, but an LED can turn on and off almost instantly. So to prevent flickering, these bulbs include large capacitors to store energy and smooth out any voltage differences. Every single person is different when it comes to flicker sensitivity, and I happen to be on the more sensitive end of the spectrum, and based on my personal experience, anything above 20% flicker, which is defined as the difference between the brightest and the dimmest points in the cycle, is extremely distracting to me and not something that I I would consider using in my house. You can see that a significant number of the bulbs that I tested had less flicker than the incandescent bulb, and only the 200 watt equivalent Fiat bulb and the GE Reveal LED bulb would be eliminated strictly due to their flicker percentage. Though the Cree and GE Reveal incandescent bulbs were also a little bit too flickery for my preference. Non-dimmable bulbs usually also have a lower flicker percentage than dimmable bulbs, and all of the Philips high efficiency bulbs had no detectable flicker, with a 0.0, .0 total flicker index and an undetectable flicker frequency. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, the 200 watt non-dimmable Fiat electric bulb was an exception to that rule. Speaking of dimming, I also tested each bulb's dimming curve using the standard Lutron dimmer from Home Depot, and the results were interesting. Human perception of brightness is logarithmic, meaning going from 500 lumens to 2000 lumens will only appear about twice as bright to our eyes. And as a result, you want the dimming graph to be curved, not straight. And the brightness at 100% should be roughly four times the brightness at 50%. And both of the 60 watt Philips ultra definition bulbs and the Fiat electric 60 watt bulb had almost perfect dimming curves as well as a minimum stable brightness under five lumens, which is great. But another interesting thing I noticed during my testing was that a few of the brighter bulbs all had significantly lower peak brightness when they got connected to the Lutron dimmer, even though it was set to 100% output using its configuration process. And the last thing to talk about is bulb longevity, which is honestly pretty complicated. So before you comment about the Centennial bulb that's been burning since 1901, I highly recommend you watch this great video by Technology Connections about why that is far from an ideal light source and why we purposely design incandescent light bulbs with shorter lifespans, and it's not to screw over the consumer. On the package, for my incandescent bulbs, it lists a lifespan of up to 1,000 hours because as the filament heats up, some of that tungsten metal actually evaporates. And after 1,000 hours of usage, that filament is just used up. An incandescent light bulb could last far less than 1,000 hours if there were a defect in the glass or in the filament, but for the most part, we can expect around 1,000 hours of usage and probably not more than that. However, the box for the LED bulbs says that they should last 15,000 hours. But all that actually means is that the LEDs themselves will maintain 70% of their original brightness for 15,000 hours. And it doesn't actually mean that the bulb will last 13.7 years. It could in fact work for twice that long but it most likely won't because LED bulbs are more complex than incandescent bulbs and there are a lot more parts that could potentially go bad. A good place to start to get your LED bulbs to last a long time is to buy the correct bulb for your fixture. 
If the bulb is on a patio or in a bathroom, you should make sure it says damp rated on the box. And the packaging may also say whether or not the bulb is suitable for a fully enclosed fixture or whether it can be installed upside down in recessed lighting because those things can affect how well the bulb can cool itself. And a cooler bulb will have less component failures. In my testing, I found that glass bulbs with cob LED filaments run significantly cooler than the aluminum and plastic bulb design. And you can see that after an hour of usage in the styrofoam enclosure, the glass Philips Ultra Definition 100 watt bulb was just 50.6 degrees Celsius at its hottest point while the 100 watt plastic Fiat electric bulb was significantly hotter after one hour with parts of the base reaching close to 90 degrees Celsius, which again could lead to premature component failures since they're often only rated to around 100 degrees. And sometimes even if you do everything right, there can still be quality control issues. And for that, the Fiat and Ikea bulbs come with a three year warranty and the Philips bulbs are warrantied for five years. But keep in mind that you'll need to keep your original receipt for any warranty claim. So conclusion time again, which bulb is the best? As a total package considering quality of light, efficiency, flicker, dimming performance, and cost, the Philips Ultra Definition bulbs are still miles ahead of anything else. And if 2700K or 5000K color temperatures are right for you, then they are an easy pick. Unfortunately, Philips makes different bulbs for 120 and 240 volt markets, so if you live in Europe, you can't buy these exact bulbs. But I do think that the closest match for the Ultra Definition series is the Philips Premium line. And you can definitely get the same ultra efficient bulbs that had very decent CRI and zero flicker. But it looks like neither the Premium line or the ultra efficient bulbs are dimmable in the European market. While the Fiat bulbs didn't perform as well as the Philips, I do like the idea of selectable color temperatures. Not because I think people are gonna be changing them often, but because I think people might not know their preference and having adjustable color temperature allows for experimentation in different rooms, at different times of day, and the ability to match existing lighting. The 60 watt Fiat bulbs from Costco had more flicker than I'd like, but had very decent CRI and brightness, especially for $1.67 each. While the 100 watt Fiat bulbs had much better flicker and efficiency with a trade-off of higher cost. Unfortunately, while they do specifically say they're damp rated, neither the 60 watt nor 100 watt boxes say anything about enclosed fixtures or downloading. And the older style plastic and aluminum construction tends to get much hotter than the newer glass design. Not to mention the fact that the glass bulbs do a much better job of evenly lighting a space rather than just emitting light in a single direction. The IKEA Solheta bulbs were fine, I guess, and were better than most of the budget brands on Amazon, but at my IKEA, they're still pretty expensive expensive at $3 per bulb. And for me, saving less than a dollar per bulb over the Philips Ultra Definition series is definitely not worth the lower CRI and dimming performance, not to mention the plastic and metal construction and the fact that the 100 watt bulbs specifically say that they aren't rated for recessed or enclosed fixtures and the 60 watt bulbs don't say anything about fixture type at all. However, controlling the trad free bulbs color temperature and dimming over Zigbee has piqued my interest and having a decent CRI and a smart bulb is pretty exciting for me. And now I'm definitely looking forward to doing a full comparison of adjustments CCT smart bulbs coming up later this year. I've got links to all the bulbs that I tested down in the description and as always I appreciate if you use those links since as an Amazon, Home Depot, and Walmart affiliate I do earn a small commission on those sales at no cost to you. I'd also like to thank all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for their continued support of my channel and if you're interested in supporting my channel please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing and as always thanks for watching the hookup.